welcome to the Lawrence at Home. My name is Fira and I'm one of the educators from the Lawrence Hall of Science and welcome to today's story time. And for today's story time, we're doing another episode of Stories and Steam, where we share the stories of scientists and their contributions to science. So before we begin with our story, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more science content. And without further ado, let's get into the story right away. So today we're going to read the story of Henrietta Swan Leafit and her amazing discovery on Cepheid rivals. So Henrietta Swan Leafit was an American astronomer who worked as a computer at the Harvard College Observatory. And while working to measure and catalog the brightness of stars, Leafit made a groundbreaking discovery on Cepheid rivals that changed the way we see the universe. So, whoa, isn't that exciting? I wonder what exactly did she discover? But first, let's learn more about her early life. So, Leafitt was born in Lancaster, Massachusetts in 1868. She attended the Oberlin College before transferring to Harvard University's Society for Collegiate Instruction of Women, or known today as the Radcliffe College. And Leafitt actually did not pick up an astronomy course until her fourth year in college. And after she graduated, she was hired as a staff in the Harvard College Observatory as a computer. So this is an interesting word, computer. I'm sure you know computer as a machine, and you're probably watching this video from a computer right now. But what do we mean when we say that someone is a computer? Well, in the early 17th century, the term computer meant one who computes. So there were teams of people, mostly women, who spent hours performing long and tedious mathematical calculations before electronic computers were commercially available. So Leafit was part of the Harvard computers who performed calculations for the Harvard Observatory. And this was how Leafit started on her astronomical career, which we're going to talk about right now. So Leafit worked under Edward Pickering while she was in the Harvard College Observatory. She was described as hardworking, serious-minded, and selflessly devoted to her career. And while she was there, she actually worked on several projects, the first one being star classification. Pickering assigned Leafit to the study of variable stars of the small and large Magellanic clouds. So the small and large Magellanic clouds are dwarf galaxies that orbit our own galaxy, the Milky Way. And from the catalog that she was given, she was able to identify 1,777 stars. She noted that the brightest stars have the longest period. Then in 1908, she published her results in the Annals of the Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College. Then another project that she worked on, and the one that she's probably mostly known for, is her project on Cepheid variables. So after she did her research on the star classification, she decided to look carefully into the relationship between luminosity and period in Cepheid variables. So you've probably heard of the term Cepheid variables in our most recent Astrophysics Friday video. Go watch that one if you haven't. But what exactly are Cepheid variables? So Cepheid variable is a type of star that pulsates radially, varying in both diameter and temperature, and producing changes in brightness with a well-defined stable period and amplitude. So it's basically a star that pulsates and changes its brightness. So sometimes it's bright and then it dims and then it brightens and dims again. So Leafit worked on this. She worked with the Cepheid variables. She observed a sample consisting of 25 Cepheid variables from the small Magellanic cloud. And she found that there's a simple relationship between the brightness of the Cepheid variables and their period. So here is the graph that she plotted. And this was a huge discovery that significantly changed astronomy. And soon we will learn just how much impact it has. 
And another thing that she worked on while she was in the Harvard College Observatory is she worked on the Harvard Standard. And so it's in addition to her research, she also developed and continued to refine the Harvard Standard for photographic measurements, which order stars by brightness over 17 magnitudes. She analyzed 299 plates from 13 telescopes to construct her scale, which is then accepted by the International Committee of Photographic Measurements in 1913. So these are all the research that she has done. And all her research has impacted the astronomical community greatly. And now let's learn more about the scientific impact. So now the period luminosity relationship found in Cepheid variables is known as the Leifitz law. And this relationship made Cepheids become the first standard candle in astronomy and allowed scientists to measure the distances to far away galaxies. So this was something that we didn't have before, but because of Leifitz's discovery, we were able to discover more galaxies. Soon after, Cepheids were detected in other galaxies outside of the Milky Way, such as the Andromeda galaxy. And this provided an important evidence for Edwin Hubble, proving that what we knew as spiral nebulae are actually other independent galaxies. And Leifitz's law helped us discover that the Milky Way is not the only galaxy in the universe, as well as showing that our solar system is not at the center of the Milky Way. So now we know that there are thousands of galaxies out there, a lot more than we thought there was. And it also changed our astronomical understanding. Leifitz's discovery allowed us to measure distances in an intergalactic scale accurately, which paved the way for our understanding of the structure and the scale of the universe today. Leifitz's research helped Edwin Hubble, the American astronomer I mentioned earlier, to establish that the universe is expanding. So this is exactly why her discovery was truly groundbreaking. I just think that it's really cool how Leifitz was able to discover something so amazing and that has such a huge impact to our current understanding of the universe. We may not be able to understand universe the way we do without her discovery. So I just think that's really, really cool and very inspiring and it makes me want to be like her one day. So that was the story of Henrietta Swan Leifitz. And with that, we've reached the end of our story time today. So thank you so much for joining me on today's story time. I hope you had fun learning about Henrietta Swan Leifitz and learned a thing or two about Cepheid variables and how they help us discover more about the universe. As always, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel to show your support and I will see you later. Bye!